Now we, we lost your screen in case you're trying to share. Yeah, the thing is I couldn't find the recording. Okay, we are recording already. Um, good evening, everyone. Now I'm going to share uh, the presentation screen and we will start and we will start the, the session for today. Today we are here together uh, to give a quick interview to the course Data 650 in which you are enrolled. And um, today uh, we are doing this for the bot section of Data 650, 9040 and 9041. Each of them has two instructor, one for the first part of the course and one for the second part of the course. So here are all the instructor in the screen NTA for the class. I'm Elena Gorcheva. Uh, with us is um, Professor Gopati, Professor Ozan, and TA Elena Baitinskaya and Linish. So uh, just few words, everyone, although everyone is already introducing himself in the class discussion in the introduction session. Uh, beside teaching the second part of the course, I will be teaching week seven to 12 of both section. I'm running the pro, I'm a program director for the Master of Science in Data Analytics and my main goal is not only to teach a single course, but to uh, overview uh, the curricula of the whole program, update it, keep it consistent and up to the date. And of course, devoted to prepare, to deliver uh, whatever I know and the team of Master of Science in Data Analytics to prepare you better for career. With us today is Professor Gopati. Gopati, can you say a few words about yourself? Yeah. Hi, uh, Elena. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I am Gopati Pushwataman. I'll be teaching one of the uh, two se sections. Um, I've been teaching Data 650 for almost three years now. Um, and uh, Linesh Day will be the uh, TA for our section. Uh, I have been uh, emailing <coughs> most of you, uh, actually all of you, uh, over the past couple of weeks. Um, uh, and I think I have met a few of you on the discussion forum. Uh, I encourage everybody to go introduce themselves in the uh, cafe uh, forum on uh, discussions. And I look forward to having a great, uh, interesting and fun and productive semester. Great. Thank you, Gopati. Ozan, can you uh, say a few words, please? Yes, uh, hello, this is uh, Professor Ozan Oskan. Um, I have been teaching at UMUC uh, at, like, uh, since uh, 2015. And uh, I have taught so far the initial course and data 620, uh, now it's like a 650 teaching as well. Uh, I recognize some of them my students from my past courses. So I wish everyone a successful semester. Thank you, Ozan. Elena? Hi, everybody. I've been with your UMUC for 11 years. Yeah. And I started in a database program and I transitioned to the data analytics program. So most of you have met me in your earlier courses in the data 610. And maybe you may have attended my introduction to R when you took Data 630, all right? So I look forward to work with you, to meet you if I have not met you before, and to work with you again if I worked with you before. All right, Linesh next. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, this is, once again, this is Linesh Dawe. Um, and I'm going to be teaming up with uh, Elena as a TA. Um, for this course this semester, the data 650. Um, just a couple of things about myself. Um, you know, I've been part of IT for more than 25 years now. And most of my you know, experience has been in the telecom industry and software development. 
and recently in, in data and analytics. Um, my current role um, you know, in, at the workplace includes in the leading data and analytics um, initiative for my organization. And um, last but not least, but I'm from the, the first group of students from UMGCs, which was you know, formerly called UMUC, um, Masters in Data Analytics program. And this is exactly the same course, folks, that I passed out in, in way back in, in 2015, um, which means uh, I was a student of this course not too long ago. So now being a student in the past, you know, I have four very important things that I would like to share with you and suggest to you all to, you know, for to being successful in this course. And you may want to really make a note of this. Now, first and foremost, you know, start working on your assignments early. And I, I know Professor Gopati and Elena and Professor Ojan are, are going to also talk about the same, but I, I'm telling you from my experience, you know, avoid procrastinating and leaving everything for the weekend. Uh, because remember, you're going to be working on an enterprise level platform that cater to real companies outside. So their maintenance windows and downtime are often during the weekends. So starting early will also give you some time to enhance your solution and make it an A-grade solution. Secondly, you know, make Google your friend. For any problems you might face during this course or program, you know, try to find a solution yourself first. There's a lot of information and documentation that is available in the internet that you can really leverage upon. Remember that you're pretty close to the end of this program and very soon you may be working somewhere if you're not yet. And you would be on your own to find solutions to any problems that you may face. Thirdly, you know, ensure that you've read all the materials that is provided in the classroom. You get a lot of information and insights to work on your tutorials and assignments. And finally, I would say, you know, post your problems and courses in, in, the, in the appropriate section of the discussions. You know, first and foremost, you'll, you'll get the same priority as what you would get by sending an email to us separately. And secondly, and very importantly, you'll be helping your classmates. Okay, so with that, you know, good luck to everyone. And I look forward to working with you all. Uh, all thank, thank you so much, Linish. Uh, and it's very important that you will have recently graduated as a TA for this class, which is very close to the way you see the class, but with already, uh, let's say, uh, experiencing uh, the program and working in the real world. So I appreciate Elena and Linish, they both are graduated uh, from the UMUC program, sharing their experience with you and helping you let's say, go through these very intense courses with too much technology. There is a lot of technology, but this is actually the today field of data analytics. So we have to deal with this. This is what the employer wants. The today agenda is comprised by uh, the introduction we already completed, the outline of the course, we're going to talk also about grading, some miscellaneous issue important, week one activity, and of course, Q&A, in which you will have the opportunity to ask questions. I want to open just parenthesis before continuing that I didn't change the, the template for the presentation with the new UMGC because um, it, they made it available just uh, yesterday and I didn't get chance to, uh, to go to the new uh, template, but you, all you know that the name of the university has changed it and we try to change all material that reflect this name change. So we are in the course of big data. Uh, you have studied along the whole program uh, what big data is. This is a buzzword from more than 10 years and uh, you have been reading and talking about this a lot. I just want to stress here, since this is the name of the course, although it has evolved a lot, that here we are talking about, if we want to formalize this, we're talking about new approaches 
that are needed when we have to deal with big data, extensive data set. We need new approaches to storage this data, new approaches to search the data, new approaches to share the data, and of course to analyze and visualize. And all these new approaches are very close related with the technology which was made available to solve this problem. That is actually part of the involvement of the data analytic field uh, with new tools, new approaches, and of course, integrating all these new approaches to, to a multiple new skills, which you as a future data scientist must have. So in, in short, when we talk about big data, we are referring to the technology related with the way to find efficient way to capture, store, search, and share the data in order to be analyzed and visualized. Think about the main word is when we talk about big data, it's not the size of the data, it's the technology which we need in order to deal with this. Uh, here I have the traditional field, uh, uh, one traditional slide in which, let's say, many years ago, uh, the big data concept was uh, presented, and you already have seen this in previous classes. I'm just putting this as, uh, as a reference, nothing different than this. We are just evolving toward what is the complexity of the data, which is our um, main goal, and how to deal with the complexity of the data. So, uh, just very, uh, very, uh, let's say, a meaningful slide is this one, which presents the history, how the number of bytes, as way they have grown, new technology appeared in order to deal with this. Just going to the last part of the slide, when YouTube and Facebook uh, started to produce exabytes, new technology was needed in order to deal with this, which was the NoSQL key value. And we are talking about in 10 years ago. And this has been going on and on and on as the number of bytes increase, new technology and new approaches are needed to deal with them. So the data and the technology goes hand by hand in order to solve problem. Here, I, uh, as a reference, I have this and the next slide for which I, uh, I want to point out to something which you already know because you're already mostly at the end of the program. As you know, in real life, nothing is black and white and there is not just structured and unstructured data. There is a lot of in between because when we talk about structured, we talk about some very well-defined schema structure, but between structured and what we understand as unstructured data, when we cannot put uh, some schema or define uh, uh, structure like um, text document, uh, picture, images, vid video, we have in between uh, a kind of data which we can deal, let's say, with uh, approaches which are not strongly uh, for unstructured data. When we talk about HML, uh, uh, which describe, uh, we are talking about uh, some kind of schema, even though the data is textual data file, but there is a schema which can make the processing and extracting a value of this data much uh, easier than the totally unstructured data, which is a YouTube video from which you want to extract uh, some insight. So uh, when you get a problem, my suggestion is that why I put this slide in the next one, look which kind of data the problem you try to solve you, ha uh, you have and look for the method which you should use in order to deal with this data. If the data is semi-structured HML, perhaps you don't have to go to the method and approaches for totally unstructured data, which is a free text um, or video. 
keep in mind these two slides and go back to them every time you approach a real problem you have to do with your project in the classroom or outside of the classroom. So why so much stress on the unstructured data today? Because actually this is uh, what company care about today. This is the real value of the data in all this unstructured data. And in addition to that is much more difficult to process and extract insight for this unstructured data. And that's why we are talking so much about natural language processing, which is the hair of uh, to deal with unstructured textual data, which is the big chunk of the data we are dealing today. And most of the data we try to, uh, to deal in this course, which is, uh, uh, let's say the wealth of big data is in the unstructured data. And here are simple examples which I borrowed this slide from IBM, which um, present uh, some uh, example to reflect ourselves how difficult is the natural language we communicate each other. <laughs> Even when we communicate each other, sometimes we need a lot of uh, some kind of explanation in order to really get the meaning of the expression we are talking about. For instance, how complex are all these bullet points to understand for how can a house can burn up as it burns down? So all this uh, complexity of the natural language Think about when we talk about a computer de dealing with natural language, that the computer should be able, if we as a human have difficulty to understand some portion, some semantic of our language, think about how difficult it will be to build a computer program which will be able to understand our language. And very simple uh, example, when you have structured data, for instance, in the down part of this uh, slide, uh, which is a table with column and, and row, you can associate Welch with G Gen General Electric. But if you read the unstructured data expression, uh, which, me, uh, which reads as a leader, is an art, then surely Jack Welch has proved himself a master painter during his tenure at General Electric. You understand that as a human, we need a knowledge to really interpret and understand that here we are talking about of the manager of uh, General Electric. And this is just to point the complexity of what we are talking about and what we are going to focus in this course is of course um, extracted very uh, uh, the most important approaches to deal with this textual and big data in several uh, projects which you will be doing practically. Uh, in this course I have to uh, stress since now, since the beginning, uh, still the name of the course is Big Data. The course will be renamed with AI. You will state what AI has to do with this course. Of course, you hear every day, uh, this is the hype of the last two years. Everything is AI. Businesses uh, need the AI to help them um, get competitive advantage. AI is everything in everywhere. So what it has to do with big data. Let's uh, just open parenthesis, uh, the artificial intelligence of the 50, the classical AI was defined, the goal was to build a program, a computer, a machine, which can substitute the human. When we talk to today about the hype of AI, which is the contemporary AI, this is a different story. We are not talking about substituting human. We are talking about 
augmenting human capability. So when we talk today about contemporary AI, we are talking about uh, uh, a computer program, a computer which can enhance human capability. Then, uh, how is this related with big data? So, so let's look from this angle with the complexity and the amount of, uh, of data. Uh, we're talking about complexity which rely in the type, different type of data, video, images, uh, a lot of textual data. Machine learning algorithm uh, have became, uh, are becoming more reliable because we can train the model, uh, the models with much more data, which permit to get more reliable and, uh, and efficient model. So big data open the door to efficient machine learning and machine learning actually is the hair of the today contemporary AI. So that is exactly the, the relation we are talking about uh, between big data, uh, big data, big data analytic machine learning and artificial intelligence in, in the realm of the contemporary AI. And as you understand, this evolvement, actually, uh, big data gives the bust to machine learning and to the, impl uh, the white, let's say, uh, impl uh, white implementation today of AI in almost any corner of our life. And of course, if this is the case, you understand, we're going to talk a lot about this in our course. That is the way the course has evolved, responding to the what is going on in this, um, in this topic. So in order to bring a little bit more clarity on this, uh, is the, uh, this next slide when we can, um, we can see the relation between what is data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. So data science can use the artificial intelligence approaches and method to uh, solve problem. On the other hand, artificial intelligence uh, has in his core the machine learning algorithm. And of course, deep learning is a subset of the machine learning. So you understand all this um, uh, a relation between deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data science. On the other hand, you can see the data science has other methods and approaches which are not necessarily artificial intelligence approaches. So data science is the broader concept here. We are talking about the different discipline and the different um, term we will be talking and practicing in this course. So this is in general what is the essence of the subject matter. And I want to stress also something which already you know, but it's very important at this part of the program that you understand that all the courses uh, you have been uh, completing in the Master of Science in Data Analytics are competence-based courses. Uh, you understand that what we are doing is giving you a reading, you read, you learn, and then you apply what you have learned using different uh, tools, different software tools in our case. So that is the case why in each course you have a practical project to do and to show what you have learned. So think about learning is the first stage, you have to do the re reading, and then the next step, uh, stage is applying what you have learned using different tools. So that's why all the uh, graded assignment uh, are what you practically can show that you have learned what you can do 
this is uh, what is named the competence-based approach for education, which is very wide used uh, today, not only in our university, but in other universities. So uh, did this give you also the opportunity to learn a software when you finishing a course, the program, you have beginning knowledge to the many tools you have been exposed in the different um, in the different um, courses. And uh, the last point I have here is to stress in the opportunity for discussion interaction. It is very important. Moreover, in a subject so complex that the one we are going to focus on in this course, the discussion are very important. The discussion are not to answer a question. When you see the description of the, the discussion with several bullet points, these are guiding points. These are not questions to answer. They are to guide you to an open discussion in which you will uh, express your idea, your understanding, and your colleague from the class will interact with you and enhance their and your understanding of the issue. So that's why it's so important to participate actively in the discussion. Of course, um, you will be rewarded with uh, a great, uh, not only with knowledge, but also with a great. Very important to share idea and enhance your understanding in the discussion forum for everything not only for question with the software that something is going wrong and uh, someone can uh, can help you i'm talking about the topic of discussion related with the topic uh, with the weekly topic in which we discuss, uh, discuss different issues related with big data and ai in this course so um, in addition to that all this we are we have been doing is because we have advisory board from industry comprised by uh, Luke Martin, Bus Allen, U.S. government um, executive uh, from different uh, U.S. government branches, IBM, uh, Microsoft. So we have people uh, who sit in our advisory board, and they are the one who advise us how to continue updating our program. So we prepare professional who are better prepared for what industry demands. That means you will be uh, better prepared to get a job and to succeed, not just to get the job, is to succeed in the job. And although the program is still young, we are talking about we are in the sixth year of the program, we have uh, several important uh, recognition already. Some of them are here noted in this page. They are much more recognition. Um, I want to focus mostly in this um, session today in what is the course. So here is a strat of the topic we are going to cover in the course. They are, this is an excerpt from the syllabus. You have them. Uh, I'm presenting this excerpt to give you the pattern how we are going to proceed in this course. Uh, for instance, if they are, uh, uh, you will see that the course is packed in two and three week, uh, two or three week uh, all together because each topic is so extensive and so deep, we cannot cover anything meaningful, meaningful in just a single week. That's why the topic are covered. For instance, uh, Big Data and Hadoop are the first two weeks. Then we spent uh, around four or five weeks uh, with what is Spark and a Spark SQL and Spark mach the machine learning part, which is, uh, let's say, the most, um, uh, let's say, on demand technology today to deal with uh, Big Data is the machine, uh, Spark machine learning. Uh, after that, we proceed to what is the sentiment text analysis using uh, today contemporary um, technology in memory analytic. And the last three uh, weeks are going to be the, in the part of AI where we are going to uh, 
uh, see, uh, uh, to learn as much as possible regarding AI application, cognitive analytic, and doing a practical project. And since they are different tool for each of this, uh, for each of this part of the course, we are going to do a uh, live uh, walkthrough to the tool. For instance, here is part walkthrough uh, week three. Uh, then we are going to do another walkthrough in uh, sentiment analysis and in uh, what is AI cognitive. Um, so keep in mind that all this is uh, in addition to the way our courses are uh, delivered with the reading, uh, lecture, and uh, a practical assignment to make uh, better and faster grasp the idea and proceed to our um, completing something uh, really um, practical and meaningful. So, uh, I have several slides here, which are also for overview things you already know from before from big data. Uh, but I want to stress in something which is very important. Since we are going to, to deal with big data technology, how, uh, how the technology has evolved to respond to the need of the data analyst, data scientist starting from, from spreadsheet through data warring houses, analytical sandbox, and evolving to what is today um, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. So in this um, slide, I'm, I'm just presenting the way how analytic has evolved to deal with new big data approaches. Initially, I have to deliver what is the traditional approach. Uh, was traditionally, uh, the user is a business person who define the task in question to be solved and request from the IT department to build, let's say, the data warring house, which is going to solve this problem. Then the IT department takes three, six months to build, uh, to build the data warehouse and then to uh, be able to run uh, the sales report, for instance, which the business person required. The today contemporary approach has evolved first with the cloud and with the evolvement of the different tool in very, uh, let's say every time we can say in most um, efficient way to do analytic. Today, nobody is asking IT department to deploy something for this problem. It's just the other way around. IT deploy a platform as a service and the platform has all the component which data analysts may need, right? And then, the data analysts explore the problem which has to be solved and look which of the available tool in the platform can be used to solve this problem. So everything goes much faster. No need to wait for building data warring house. Not that this traditional method is still, of course, in place in many company, but is part of the analytic is not the basic, is not the main part, is some component of the analytic to run a report. This still exists. We're talking about the contemporary approach in which the data scientists, data analysts will find in the platform all necessary tool to solve the problem, choose from them and run whatever is needed, uh, train the model in order to solve uh, the problem at hand. So we are going, of course, to be uh, not only aware, aware of this new approach, but to work uh, with the tools available exactly with the, um, uh, with the tools available uh, at hand provided in the cloud. 
uh, we are going to use uh, the IBM cloud mostly for this course, mostly I'm saying because you still can use Azure for uh, some of the assignment, but uh, the big part of the course is uh, in the IBM cloud. So that's why you are required to um, sign up for IBM cloud account, which is gonna cost you nothing, is totally free. Just as an academic institution, we have the access to the IBM cloud and to the Microsoft cloud, to the Azure, uh, to use their resources for our classroom. And we are going to use the convenient so software as a service and platform as a service, where uh, in particular, we are going to use um, the Spark DB2, which is, um, yeah, we are going to do in memory analytic, and Watson Cognitive is going to be for the AI part. Watson Studio is the data science platform, which is, uh, let's say, is a subset of the IBM cloud built specifically for data scientists with, uh, with the concept of open source. Uh, even though you uh, listen about IBM, let me put it this way, in Watson Studio, Besides Watson, Watson Cognitive, uh, we have the uh, Python uh, uh, shared a lot of tutorial, Python new, uh, notebook, R, you can use embedded there. So all these open source to uh, tools, uh, 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 open source software, which are uh, today accepted as, let's say, as the most important for, uh, for the data scientist, data analyst, you can have it in the cloud, in the Watson Studio, and work in addition with the database, uh, which, is in, uh, which provide powerful uh, to, uh, to do uh, in memory analytic, and in addition to use um, as a service, what is Watson Cognitive. I'm just going to go very fast regarding this part. I took some uh, screenshot from the IBM cloud, which looks something like this. When you sign up, you can start exploring until we start working specifically with the IBM cloud, which is going to be from week three. That's why we require you do this on D4 and get ready simultaneously with completing the, uh, the first assignment. And the what is uh, named the platform for data scientists, named IBM Watson Studio, as I mentioned, with uh, a lot of shared open source resources of tutorial, notebook, data set, article, and in addition tools like RStudio, uh, notebook, notebook uh, data refinery, and the community where you can find a lot of um, a lot of open uh, resources available. So uh, is a lot in this class, but this is the only way we can catch up with the speed the technology in this field is evolving. So we have to get to this, uh, to, to the most important part of the technology of big data. Um, here I want just to stress the services we are going to use for the AI part. The services are built on, based on, if you remember, um, uh, if you remember IBM uh, several years ago, put their computer name IBM Watson to play against the best uh, player in Jeopardy game. They built this computer which costs $10 million uh, to play just, and the computer won. That was the showcase of IBM, of the capability, what, how you can build, let's say, artificial intelligence, and uh, capability which are very close to the human cognitive capability. 
So of course, this is something very expensive, but after that came the next phase, and the next phase was to use what they built in this computer and to provide specific services, which are some for uh, visual, uh, for images, for text, for cognition, as a services and very uh, at very low cost in the cloud. So as a user, you, we are going to use them as a service, not the whole computer, which nobody can pay for. Just we are going to use the services like many of the businesses actually are using today for natural language processing, understanding textual information, understanding uh, images and so on and on and on. So based on that computer are the all these AI cognitive services which we are going to use in this course. Here is the sequence of the assignment. The first one is going to do some practical stuff on what is the Hadoop ecosystem. We choose the H base, which is one significant, very significant component of the Hadoop ecosystem is the first one. Then the second one is machine learning on, on Spark, sentimental analysis using Twitter uh, data with um, in the IBM cloud. A Spark is also in the IBM cloud. Um, we are going to do at the end of the course, the uh, fourth project is going to be to build intelligent chatbot using Batsun Cognitive Services. So if you see, um, the course is very interesting with interesting uh, uh, a project in the area of uh, big data and AI. And I'm totally sure that you will be enjoying and but of course you will have to work a lot. So, um, I would like to give the word to Gopati. Uh, Gopati, would, would you like to go over the grading and other requirement for the course, please? Are you there? No? He's on mute, Yolanda. Uh, he's in mute. Well, he can unmute himself. I, I uh, since I'm sharing the screen, I know I understand he is on mute and cannot talk. Gopati, can you unmute yourself, please? No. Let me see if I can do for you. Here we go. No. Uh, it looks that only the. No, I cannot unmute him. Uh, maybe he stepped away from his computer. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's okay. That's okay. I can go very fast about this. Uh, just this is information which is in the syllabus. It's very important that each of you read the syllabus and understand the grading. The grading is consistent like in the whole program. Uh, and you must understand that if you do what the project describe, uh, you are satisfying the requirement of the assignment and this is a B uh, as a grade. In order to get the A, you have to go above and beyond for what we are using with in deep analysis. So please be conscious about this and take your time. Uh, like always in this program, we require between 15 and 20 hours a week in order to be able to succeed. So keep this in mind and work hard. If you, the most important is you ask question if something you don't understand because the most important is all. Uh, uh, the most important is you don't assume something which maybe is not the uh, the case. For instance, for the first week, nobody is asking 
the student for uh, the first project, which is week one and two. If you read carefully the assignment, uh, you should understand that nobody is asking you to install Hadoop in your computer. There is no need about this. Uh, the assignment requires a pseudo code. So read carefully the assignment and understand. We are not asking you to even the practical part. You can go to the Azure cloud and perform that, but there is no need to install any Hadoop in your computer. Very important. So you don't waste precious, pre, uh, very important time because the course is quite, um, uh, quite intense and uh, we need to save time for uh, any confusion. Very important. Question first in the classroom. So everyone benefits. You benefit because somebody is gonna answer to your question as soon as possible. It could be the instructor, it could be the TA, it could be one of your colleagues. And moreover, your colleague will benefit because maybe they have the same question and they even didn't realize they had this question. So, um, I don't know if um, uh, uh, Gopati or Ozan, are you there? Do you want to say a few words regarding the miscellaneous issue about grading, announcement, posting? Because these are organizational issues which we are running in the uh, bot section. Yeah, <clears throat> Elena, I will go uh, first. Okay. Um, so um, I just want to re reinforce what uh, Dr. Gorcheva just said. Um, participation <clears throat> in uh, discussions is very important. Uh, overall, discussions carry about 12% of your grade. So um, make sure you don't forget to uh, have a substantial first post. Um, what most people do is they jump into the discussion, discussions middle of the way and just respond to other uh, students, okay, uh, respond to other students' pose. That's only part of the requirement. Uh, the main requirement is that you should have a substantial post where, that generates discussion and you come back and reply or respond to all the uh, questions and you know other comments on that particular post. Um, so that is very important. Make sure you do that. You keep track of your discussion posts every week. Um, and you know this is the standard followed for this course. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the assignments go, um, I will, uh, you know, I always post example assignments after grading. Uh, you can see from them that there is a very well researched um, introduction, a very detailed introduction in a well written report. There is always a very well researched detailed introduction and all the different requirements listed in the rubric are addressed and satisfied, okay? So make the rubric your guide, look at it very carefully. Points are allotted exactly by uh, the requirements listed in the rubric. So uh, every section in every section you are supposed to address a certain number of points. That is the minimum requirement. Make sure you do that. And um, there is always an opportunity or a suggestion to, uh, you know, inviting you to be creative, to explore, uh, you know, whatever it is to explore newer command sets or, uh, um, you know, work with a newer data set, things like that. And you have to do all that to get an A. Um, so that, that is, uh, you know, and uh, uh, regarding announcements, uh, always look out for an annou announcement early Monday morning. I usually post it uh, midnight Sunday and uh, pay close attention to the announcements. 
there are always some um, you know some some new uh, information regarding either your IBM account or you know some uh, something that you need to avoid doing or something that you need to do for that week uh, for that week. So the, the announcements are very important. Um, and the last point I want to make is, um, as Dr. Gocheva said, if you run into problems, immediately go to the proper, uh, appropriate section in discussions and post as much details as you can, as many details as you can, including screenshots uh, showing what you did and what the problems were, what the error messages were. Okay, we will uh, immediately follow up within 12 to 24 hours. Um, and uh, if the problem gets complicated, then uh, we can follow up with an email, but that's not your first, uh, that should not be your first choice. Uh, secondly, very, very important, if you have any wish issues with your IBM account, do not raise a ticket do not um, you know, create a ticket uh, for a technical issue without consulting the staff, or, uh, without consulting either myself or uh, Dr. Ozan or, the, um, or Linesh and Elena, okay? Uh, you need our permission to create a ticket. Often we will create the ticket for you if it is a real technical issue, but that happens very, very rarely. So uh, you should, I mean, first bring bring up the issue with the uh, teaching staff. Um, that's all I have to say. So uh, good luck with the course. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Do you have something? Yes, Professor, sure. I mean, uh, Professor Gopati covered almost everything. He didn't leave me anything, but... Um, let me emphasize some of the important points he raised. So yes, participation in discussion board is very important, but early participation is much more important. Like, don't wait, please, like the last couple of days, participate early so that more people can read your posts so that you can be helpful to more people in the classroom. So please do early participation in addition to participating in discussion board. Uh, Professor Gopati also emphasized the rubric, but besides rubric, we have also assignment description section. So um, in addition to rubric, make sure that you understand and read everything in the assignment description and cover every point and don't, don't miss any points so that you know you don't lose any point just because of uh, you know not reading any section. Announcements are very important uh, again, and we are uh, sharing all of our, you know, um, updates, all of our, you know, important points in the announcements. Please don't also um, miss them. Make sure that you have, uh, you know, like a kind of notifications to your email, to your email, so that you don't miss any announcements. Also, some uh, of the discussion board, you can uh, subscribe and get all these notifications. And finally, uh, our TAs, uh, Yelena, Linesh, they are, they are going to have some live sessions for our, for our uh, assignments. If you participate in these live sessions, you can ask your questions and you can get answers. So. Uh, before this live session, it's better to read the assignment description, make a little bit progress, and after, if you as, if you join this live session, it will be very, very uh, helpful for you. Thank you, Osan. Uh, I want just uh, to add something uh, which is uh, not in the slide. So, there are two issues already we have. First, make sure you have your student email working. It, uh, we, had, uh, we have transitioned it from Google to the Microsoft email to Outlook past uh, fall, and there are still people who have not uh, transitioned it. You have to go to the email 
an update your profile because without student email, you cannot sign for the IBM cloud, for no, neither for Azure, uh, from the Azure cloud, for, um, from Microsoft, you need your UEMUC student email working. So this is mandatory first task, even before uh, make sure your email is working. And if not, go and update your email. Uh, secondly, uh, many people already are signing uh, for uh, signing up for the IBM Cloud. You will get six months promo code when you sign and you follow the instruction. Uh, there is a book in the system right now, and uh, let's say randomly, IBM is. Uh, the system is generating code which says six months, but at the time you apply it, uh, effectively is 29 code, uh, 29 day only. And this serves not the purposes for this class. So if you are affected this way, please don't hesitate and immediately contact the TA for your section. We are collecting people who got this uh, generated error of the system. We don't know when it's going to be fixed, it, but better don't wait to be fixed. It. Better go get this code and then um, send an email to the TA that when you applied the code, your account is only uh, for 29 days, not for, uh, for six months. So those are the important announcements I have. I think we should proceed to the Q&A because time is advancing. And of course we can continue talk, the talking, but it's very important that uh, anyone who has question can either unmute himself or post the question in the chat. I don't see question in the chat, let me see. Um, Anybody? Okay, something appeared. If you have only 29 days, Adam is uh, talking, uh, I'm answering his question. If you have 29 days, take a screenshot that you actually applied the code and is visible which code is this and send the screenshot to the TA to, together with your specific email address, which is your email address name and a screenshot. Yeah, yeah. And we are going to Adam, you're in session 9040, right? You may have received an email from me. In the email, I said yesterday, but it also applies if you uh, got your code today. Yes. I, I was not aware if the issue was actually fixed. So whenever, if, if you got the code, which is only good for 29 days, just go ahead and uh, respond to my email. Okay? Adam, you were on the email I sent today. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Any anyone else? Okay, Annabelle. Yes, I read your question. You are welcome. Anybody else? I know uh, at first, uh, maybe questions still are not popping, they will be coming later, but that's why we have a Q&A section in the classroom, so don't hesitate to post them. Anybody else? Uh, if I'm missing something, Ozan, 
Elena Linish, feel free to to add. I think the most we covered the most important thing. Of course, we cannot cover everything. Everything will evolve. Again, the course is quite difficult uh, because it's a lot of material, but there is no way to get at least a splash of what is big data in the today contemporary AI without uh, having to do uh, a little bit more work. I Elna, just wanted to add something now that I see that we don't have more questions here. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that um, we'll be having um, in, um, a Google um, a competition pretty soon uh, on Kaggle platform. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of send more information your way, but we'll let you, you know, get your feet wet with uh, the course and uh, the material and all that you need to get done in a week or two. So we'll let your, you know, assignment one get out of the way before we can introduce that. But it, it's, it's a fun thing um, and um, it, it can only add um, to, to you know, gaining some points here rather than losing. So, you know, it would be, you know, good to kind of get to know that about the competition. So more to come on that and then we'll share all that information with you soon. Excellent. I forgot about this. Thank you, Linesh. Thank you. Any other question? Oh, yeah. Another thing is a notification feature in Leo. You may uh, choose to receive notifications when new announcement is posted. So, like, for instance, I understand that for some of you, it might be more convenient to check your email, right, or your text messages more often than going in the classroom. So there is an option to um, receive an email when the new announcement is posted in the classroom. Okay, so just go ahead and check the notification session section right just wanted to make sure you're aware thank you lena mm -hmm. well i think we covered most of the thing we are going to meet in average every two or three weeks so and we have the classroom if there are not more questions um Thank you everyone for participating. And I look forward to meeting and working with everyone and wishing you very, very successful and rewarding semester. Stop sharing. And have a wonderful evening. Okay, thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye.